Now is our chance, my dear friends. Yes, Jurassic Park will be the vision that becomes manifest. John, after what we've been through, aren't we moving too fast? Precisely why we must move quickly, Dr. Sattler. Once the world sees our dinosaurs, then there'll be no stopping us. And that's the fear, isn't it? Not the dinosaurs, but failure. It's my hope, Dr. Malcolm. And soon, it will be mankind's. You'll see. Oh, I already have. Man, I'm just watching this, this helicopter fly over the landscape here. It looks good. Not bad at all. Like, it actually looks almost like a movie or something like that. If it wasn't like 60 FPS and feeling like extremely surreal. I genuinely think this would be like movie footage. Like, it's kind of crazy. Like, look at this. This is actual gameplay right now. Look at this. I get to like, like move around and stuff. Oh, mission incoming. Mr. Hammond, we should now be able to move the dinosaurs from Site B. Yes, that's right. Where are we on the incubations? We have the Triceratops and all the other species secure, John. We're ready. Those will do very nicely. Cambot, see that they are shipped here to Isla Nublar. Yes, sir. They'll need suitable enclosures. Of course. I have every faith and confidence. All right. Well, we have the Triceratops, Dilophosaurus, and Parasaurolophus at the uh, at Site B, so I could only assume that we had absolute control over which dinos we would be bring from Site B to here, because those are the dinos we made over there, you guys. Uh, well, kind of interesting that we don't have any Stegos here. We already had Triceratops here, though, and Isla Nublar. We already had Brachios. We already had Gallimimuses. Yeah, we already had Dilophosaurus as well. We already had Parasaurs, so not really adding anything <laughs> crazy new or anything like that here, honestly. Anyways, mission, welcome back to Isla Nublar. The work we did on Isla Sorna means we're now in the position to bring across some dinosaurs. Yeah, you know, just more of the same <laughs> dinosaurs than what we had beforehand, which I guess can't isn't necessarily a bad thing. Maybe soon we'll actually bring some new dinosaurs. Ooh, that'd be really good. That's actually probably what's going to happen next. Maybe we're going to get like a T-Rex. Maybe they're going to be like, man, we got some pretty good creatures right now. How about we step up our game and get a T-Rex or something crazy? And that's how it's going to be like in Jurassic Park all over again. <laughs> Anyways. Use the arrival helipad to request the following species, Triceratops, Dilophosaurus, and Parasaurolophus from our dinosaur factory as they called it from Isla Sorna. Ensure that each species is safely enclosed, thankfully all those creatures already have their own enclosure in place already so we can just add them to their already existing enclosures. The deaths of mission required dinosaurs result in island failure. A Triceratops, Dilophosaurus, and Parasaurolophus to the park rewards $600,000 hatchery capacity which means we could incubate three dinos at once instead of just two. That's going to be really cool. An improved output 2.0. That's going to be for our power plant so they can produce more power to power more buildings. So that's going to be really good. So let's start the mission. Oh God, yeah. See, this one I'm talking about literally looks like it could be out of a movie. Like, this is insane, you guys. But yeah, like I was saying earlier, like, what was it? This area over here? Yeah, this area over here, we had, we had trikes, we had parasaurs. We had Brachios, Gallimimus, and stuff like that. We could just put the Trikes and Parasaurs over here, where there already are Trikes and Parasaurs. And then, Dilophosaurus, what was it, over here or something like that? Oh god! Remote incubation! Dinosaurs are incubated at the hatcheries on Isla Sorna, then delivered to Isla Nublar by helicopter. Select the arrival helipad to incubate new dinosaurs. When a dinosaur has finished incubating, select a destination on Isla Nublar for it to be delivered. Alright, sounds good. Easy enough. And over here, yeah, over here is the Lofsaurus area, I believe, right? Uh, yep, carnivore feeder, and there's a Lofsaurus right there. Let's click on him. Why can't... Oh. I'm looking at the feeder right now, but there's the Lofsaurus. Can I click on him? Whatever, you just you just saw him running, running across the... There we go, I got him that time. Oh, look at that. Look at that, look at that skin pattern he's got. Really cool. And look at this, he's got a friend. Oh, they've got his frills out. Oh, frills are back. Oh, is he going to do it again? Oh, what are they doing? Oh, they're just like talking to each other. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> their frills just like pop out and instantly pop back to the side of their heads. <laughs> or their necks or whatever. Alright, well, anyways, yeah, let's go back to the, uh, to the arrival helipad. Let's request a trike, Dilophosaurus and Parasaurolophus to be, uh, so, Isla Sorna hatching bay. So, yeah, I guess we can only do two at once, I suppose. That kind of sucks. But, 
We need to do Triceratops, Dilophosaurus, and Parasaurolophus. Uh, which I guess... Uh, are we able... Hold on. Are we able to... As a rival helipad, it would need to be Visitor Center, right? Yep, Visitor Center, so... We could construct a uh, expedition team there, a fossil module there. And I guess, uh, we could get better genomes for the creatures by doing more, uh, excavations and whatnot. So that's gonna be great. So our best cre- Whoa! Triceratops is at 80%, I didn't even realize that. And Dilophosaurus is at 84, so yeah, let's definitely get them, you guys. Modify genome. Let's see if we can do any more modifications to them. Uh, yep, we can do one more right there. Resilience to the Dilophosaurus. Which one am I going to do? Intensive repair. Was that the one I was going to do earlier? Well, for Dilophosaurus, might as well give us some attack. So intuitive learning, let's do that. And uh, let's incubate this guy. Remote incubate. And uh, let's remote incubate a Triceratops as well. Oh, whoops. Uh, cancel that? Uh, partial refund. Yeah, let's cancel it. Because I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get a slightly better Triceratops. But uh, because we're... we're Hold on. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, like, I'm incubating them over here, so I should probably uh, be worried about uh, the Dilophosaurus being in this enclosure. But no, this is the arrival helipad. This is where, I guess once it's done, we're going to be commanding the helicopter to land the uh, Dilophosaurus where we want to. And we're going to take it to the Dilophosaurus area, of course. So for right now, let's actually modify the trike. Uh, oh, I guess we can't. I guess we have to we have to have 100% genome research on it or whatever you want to call it to have that final padlock unlocked, so that's going to be unfortunate. Uh, let's keep everything as is, and uh, remote incubation on that one, so that's kind of unfortunate. I just uh, I canceled that one and then just redid it right there. But there we go, we got those going on in the background. Uh, I guess we can't do three at once, even though we have three hatcheries, I get, I, we should be able to do six critters at once at least, but I guess we can only do it from one, perhaps? Is that kind of, oh! Incubation speed, success rate, yeah, let's do success rate. Ooh, probably should add that earlier on. You got, oh man! See, right as I say that, we had an incubation fail. Yeah, well now we're gonna, oh man, it was the Tracer. Oh man, even the Dilophosaurus failed at 40%. Yeah, ah, man. See, we should have had that. I thought we had it. We had it on the on the buildings, I guess. I guess we have to have it on this one too. That's kind of weird. And it's Triceratops. Oh, at least we have money to spare, $6 million. These guys are $342,000 and like just under $200,000 for the trike to incubate. So we're not losing out on too much money. It's still like dipping into our bank account down there. But honestly, it'd be great if that didn't happen. <laughs> Anyways, I guess we have to just play the waiting game now and hope that we're lucky enough to have uh, no failures here. We have 64% uh, viability on this trike with plus 30% right there, which is great because uh, we're at 94% viability right there. The Lophosaurus is uh, at 79% viability, so a 79% chance that it's going to be a successful incubation. And then, of course, what that means, 21%, 9 plus 10, a chance that it's going to fail. And uh, over here is a 6% chance that it's going to fail, so yeah, don't want that to happen. Of course, earlier on, it was 30% it was more likely to fail because we didn't have the success rate thing right there, but we do now, so that's good. But uh, speaking of uh, the power output thing that we read earlier that we're going to get from this mission, how are we doing on power output? Yeah, unused power is at 50, so we we have a lot of spare power. We don't need to worry about that right now, so that's good. We do have an emergency shelter there. I kind of want to get another emergency shelter over here, closer to the- Oh man, another incubation failed! The Lophosaurus? Well, that makes sense, because that one had a- uh, What was it? Yeah, a 21% chance of failing, and I guess that happened right there, so that sucks. So it failed on the, I guess, 51% chance I had earlier on, and then again on the 21% chance, so that sucks. Do another remote incubation. Man, we're, we're literally gambling with hecking creatures over here, which is kind of reminiscent of my original mainline Jurassic World Evolution series, right? With me literally gambling hecking dinos with high ratings and stuff like that. Anyways, we did have a successful incubation of the Triceratops, though, so let's request delivery and have it delivered over here. Uh, where is the big pack of trikes? Oh, here they are, right here, just sleeping. So let's land them, like, right there, where all the other trikes are hanging out at, and, uh... Yeah, look at that, add trike to the park. We already have that one check marked, so that's great. And there he is. Because I can't actually zoom in on him, but uh, look at him. He's being lowered down next to his friends. One of them sleeping and is wondering why it's so loud. <laughs> and he can't sleep. <laughs> he landed successfully. Nice. All right, well, now we have another uh, slot on the incubation thing over here now. Let's actually get the, oh yeah, hold on. We should have the excavation. Yeah, we have expedition team over here, so. Might as well continue on, what would it be? Oh, we can get Corythosaurus now? Nice! Corythosaurus, and Ankylos, Ankylosaurus, Myasaurus, Abatosaurus, Cerat, oh, we can get a Ceratosaurus, or Ceratosaurus. So that's gonna be a really good carnivore. I kinda wanna get that one, you guys. 
Uh, Brachio, Parasaurolophus. Oh, we can go to Africa too. Spino! We get a Spino. Spino. What about up here? Gallimimus. I think up here was a Velociraptor, right? If I remember correctly from uh, regular Jurassic World Evolution. Nothing down here in South America, though. It wasn't South America Gigantosaurus? Maybe. If you guys have better memory than me, maybe you guys can be like, yeah, it was. I think we had Baryonyx over here in uh, England. So, what else would... There's four dig sites over there. I know Baryonyx was one of them, though, but there's a lot other. Only two other ones over there in Europe, though, so... A lot of dig sites over here in North America. Canada and the United States, so that's really good. Uh, Isora, Prithosaurus. Don't know what that could be. There's only four padlocks on the North America, though. But uh, we do have two dig teams, so might as well continue on. Uh... Oh, Pachycephalosaurus. I didn't even see that, but then, yeah, now we can get Pachycephalosaurus, so that's good. But uh, I do want to get more Parasaurolophus, Stego, or eh, I guess we can do Stego, but uh, Trike and Dilophosaurus. But uh, a lot of these are. Yeah, look at that. That's four different types of creatures right there. I really want to like get those guys up to 100%, and I can't really find any that are just Trike or just Stego or just. Whatever else, you know, but I guess I'll do this one. Parasaurolophus and Corythosaurus, sure, why not? And then a uh, Triceratops, Breath, Echocephalosaurus, and Anklo, sure, let's do that one too. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and we could also uh, do more research over here, so let's let's continue researching those diseases and try to get some medical treatment for them in case they ever pop up over here randomly, so definitely get that out of the way. And uh, now I assume that Lavasaurus is successfully incubated? Oh, not yet, actually. Oh man, I should have had the uh, Parasaur going on in the background. Whoops. Meant to do that, but didn't do it. Whoops. <laughs> Anyways, let's see if we have an. Oh, we have another right there. Resilience. What am I going to do? Intuitive learning, intensive repair. I think it was intensive repair, right? Yeah, let's do intensive repair on that one. So there we go. And uh, now it's going to have good viability and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll leave that 44 rating. Segasaurus has 51 rating. Trike has 42 rating. Oh, and the Dilophosaurus has 90 rating. Really, really good right there, you guys. Anyways, you do need to get the uh, Parasaur right there. So there we go. And let's request delivery for our remote incubated Dilophosaurus and put them over here. Where's the pack of Dilos? Saw them earlier. Oh, here's one right there. Let's just land that one like right there then. That should be good. All right. Well, anyways, kind of want to see. We have a uh, them back from the... Oh, well, they're, they're about halfway done right there. Oh, we have fossils here? I guess that was from last time and I never, uh, never extracted them then. Okay, well, trikes. Parasaurs? Yeah, oh man, we're probably going to hit like 100% on Trike here very soon. Yeah, probably. If I get like one more fossil after this, we're probably going to hit 100%. Because two three stars at 80%? Yeah, we're probably going to hit 100% here pretty soon, you guys. That's going to be great. All right. An egg at the arrival helipad failed to hatch. Man, the Parasaur failed. Yep, Parasaur failed. Golly. All right. So what was the failure rate on that, though? Oh, man. 62% viability after the, the thing right there. So that means it only has a 38% chance of failing. That's actually pretty high there, you guys. Man, well, that sucks. But let's do another remote incubation. Let's do another one over here. Just in case it fails again, we'll have a backup already going. <laughs> right? But if we have a uh, add Triceratops to the park and add Dilo to the park, we have those done, which is great. Now all we need to do is uh, just wait for the Parasaurs to hopefully be done. But we have some fossils that just arrived. So, uh, Ankylo! Look at that, we got Ankylo! Crithosaurus! Crithosaurus, so a 2 star and a 3 star and a 2 star Ankylo. And a 4 star Amber Pachycephalosaurus. Can't do that though, because uh, our little queue down there is full, so that sucks. Let's sell that though, and let's go back to Expedition. And, uh, let's see. Crithosaurus, Ankylo. I guess we'll continue on Ankylo. Sure, why not? That's a, that's a great creature. Let's, let's do this one. Apatosaurus and Ceratosaurus? Let's, let's get those. Maybe we'll get the Ceratosaurus and get a really good carnivore here, you guys. That'd be really good. And if not the Apatosaurus, I think that's... What was that? That was one of the sauropods that's, like, shorter, right? If I remember from regular Jurassic World Evolution. Maybe. Oh, we can't... Yeah, we can go to the engine database. That's the Zoopedia for this. I have completely forgot about that, you guys. Uh, where would it be? Brachio, Gallimimus. Yeah, I don't think it's on here because we don't have it researched. And I think it only shows up in engine database once it hits 50% uh, viability. We have Velociraptor on there, though. Oh, it's probably because we already have him in the park. So, yeah. Uh, we're not going to be able to read about the Apatosaurus until we have that at 50% viability, unfortunately. So, that sucks. But, anyways, for right now, I want to check up. Oh, man. Yeah, see, look at that. One of the Parasaurs did fail, but we had another one already going on in the background. It's at 42% right now. Is he going to hit 50% and be a guaranteed incubation? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but I did get a comment. I don't know if it was in this series or my regular Jurassic World Evolution series, but someone said 
that this first 50% of the incubation is like the egg part of the incubation. And then I guess the second 50% would be like them growing up from like being a baby and then juvenile and then adolescence. And then after that, they're already an adult, like they're full sized adult. And then that's when we can release them. So that kind of makes sense as to why it fails up to 50%. And then after that, it's fine. Cause after, after 50%, it'd be completely hatched and it'd be a baby, a uh, juvenile and then adolescent, right? So that makes sense. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you guys think that's true? It makes sense to me. I don't know if it's like verified as like actual, like the reason why, but it, it makes sense as to why that would be the case. But either way, this Paris Award got past the 50% mark, which is great. So all we have to do is just play the waiting game for that. And uh, we'll be able to just land it like in this enclosure over here and we'll be fine. But uh, I do want to go back to research. I think there's one more thing. Yep, medical treatment. Uh, tuberculosis bacteria, let's get that nice and researched, just in case that pops up in our park, we'll already have that, uh, ready to just inject to any dinos that, uh, that have tuberculosis, as well as any other, uh, disease, that's great, we already have that covered across the board, let's see what else are we going to get, oh, a bunch of fossils just got done, that's great, so let's go back to, let's, uh, let's do this one, Pachycephalosaurus, Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, do that, and let's do this one over here, Pachycephalosaurus, Corythosaurus, Triceratops, and Ankylosaurus, so there you go. Of course, it does cost, by the way, it costs money to actually go out and research. 45,000, 45,000, 54,000, 45,000, 45,000, 54,000, 36,000 to go up to Canada. And uh, 45 right there for that Canada one. So, yeah, it does cost money to go out there. But uh, you do get a chance of actually making some money. So, yeah, look at this. We just got uh, gold right there. Probably cost $45,000 to get this gold. But uh, we got a little bit of money out of it in the end, as well as some fossils. So, can't complain about that one bit. So, let's sell that gold. And, uh, let's reset. Oh, yeah, look at that. We got the Apatosaurus right there, so, yeah, I can't complain. Is that 40% right now, though, so, two-star, that's, that's, I don't think that's going to take it to 50%, but we do have an amber. <gasps> Ceratosaurus got an amber! Oh, man! It's at 31% right now, though, so I doubt it's going to hit 50% on the genome after that, uh, amber, but that's definitely going to help out a ton, so let's, let's definitely research that. Two-star anklo right there, and an amber for an anklo. Nice, that's definitely 100% hitting, uh, that's the pack of Civilosaurus, uh, Amber right there. Yeah, yeah, the ankle is definitely hitting, uh, 50% on the genome, so we'll be able to make that here pretty soon, you guys. But the Parasaur, I'm pretty sure, is finished, right? Yep, there it is right there. Request delivery, and let's deliver it over to here. Now, where are the Parasaurs hanging out? Here they are right here. There you go, let's land them right there. I don't know why the camera jerks back to the heckin'... Jurassic Park will need a tour, of course. No, not this. <laughs> uh, trust me? Those cars are no match for a T-Rex. We will make sure it's done right. You can't always live in the past. This whole island is one big monument to the past. When I studied to be a paleontologist, the chance of me ever seeing a living dinosaur was nil. The chance that I'd have to run for my life from one, even less than that. And now we are putting the public within biting range of them. You're right, Alan. Hammond's going to do this whether we approve or not. So we have to make sure every measure is being taken. We need the dinosaurs safe, and the people even safer. Mr. Cabot, I assume you'll want to test the tour personally. That's not really part of my job description. We should make sure that the tour ride allows guests to see all the dinosaurs. They should experience the wonder of this place. And not the terror that we have. <laughs> that goes without saying. I'm saying it anyway. All right, well, oh man, viable genome for Pac Pachycephalosaurus, so that's great. Part tour. The part tour allows guests to experience all the dinosaurs at Jurassic Park up close. Research binocular, oh man, look at that right there. Yep, just like I said earlier in the series, we have the part tour. It's like unfinished as I just like outlined just a moment ago while they're talking. But yeah, now I guess we're gonna finish it, huh? So that's gonna be great. Research binoculars to extend the view range of tour vehicles. Too much damage to vehicles from dangerous dinosaurs will cause the park tour to enter an emergency shutdown and require a ranger team to reopen it once the danger has passed. So, similar to the ranger vehicles, how they can take damage, the park tour vehicles can take damage as well. Construct and connect a park tour. Where are we going to put the, uh, the beginning of it? Maybe, like, over here? There's a spot right here that'll fit, so... Where would that be? Guests, I assume? That's emergency bunker, so I guess operations then. Uh, or, no, it's, uh, enclosures, right? Yep, there it is right there. Part tour, because it can go into the enclosures as you guys saw earlier. With the, oh, yeah, look at that. It fits perfectly. Oh, wait, does it have to be connected like that? If that's the case, I'm going to have to get rid of these. So let's uh, demolish this, demolish that. 
And then I'll connect that again here in just a moment. But go to enclosures, part four. And let's do this, because it's already like half built right there. Oh, wait. Yeah, there's one of those, as I called them, perma trees. <laughs> so let's get rid of that, and let's get rid of some of the uh, some of the other trees here that are kind of in the way. There you go. Just so they're not in the way, and I can actually see where I'm placing this down. Part four, so let's place it down right here. Oh, is it in the, uh, is it going to be powered? Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to place another thing over here, you guys. Another uh, pylon, or a uh, substation. So there you go. We got that right there. It's connected up to the pre-built thing that was over here. Oh, there it is right there. And it's connected up. Noise. Connect this up. Uh, oh, whoops. Hold on. I can't just select the building. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's under construction. I can't select it. So, anyways, there you go. Got that one nice connected right there. I don't know why there's no building sound. Usually there's like a building sound that's going on, but I can't hear it. That's really cool. They have the iconic Jurassic Park gateway right there, you guys. That's awesome. Then, of course, we have to build it going all the way into here. And then, oh, track. Yeah, I know tracking complete. But uh, after we do that. Maybe I'll make it come out around to here, and then... Maybe not to there, maybe I'll make it come out here. And then we'll get a good view, like, atop this. Over across this pond over here. Ankylosaurus, new viable genome, nice. And then, maybe I'll stay at the top of the hill. Maybe I won't get too close. That way we're gonna have, you know, less... Less chance of these guys getting killed by hacking dinos and stuff like that, right? But, you get a really good view of the whole lake as you scroll across like this. That'll be really cool. And then, uh... I don't know, maybe, if, maybe maybe down here. Oh yeah, there is this area up here too. And then we can connect it up over here with the Velociraptors. We'll see here in just a moment. I'm, I'm just skimming around right now and just seeing how it looks. But yeah, one thing does not have a power, so let's get a substation over here. And uh, give it some power, so let's, uh, yeah, let's place lake right there. It's kind of ugly that it's just out in the open, but what are you going to do, right? Let's connect it up, there you go. Speaking of connecting things up, edit tour route. Uh, there you go, connect that up now, noise. All right, so that's great. And this is circling around, and we could have this one go into, into there, or what? I don't think this just goes into the, it doesn't go into the Dilo area. It takes you like right next to it, so. This one takes you into the uh, herbivore area, so. Yeah, let's just do what I just basically just outlined so it would go over here by this pond. So, yeah, we have a lot of money, so we don't need to worry about, oh, man, uh, can I afford it or not? Because we can afford it. Let's just, oh, whoops, I made that start turning a little bit too early. Oh, whoops, demolish. There you go. Yeah, I don't know why there's like no sound or no like music or like destroying or placing down sound effects. That's kind of weird. It happens every now and then with Jurassic World Evolution. I don't know why, but let's continue building the track over here. Uh, oh, yeah, let's just make it go straight. And then you're going to go right next to the Brachios. Look at that. That is iconic. That is an iconic view. And then you get a nice little side, like, view of the uh, the pond right there. And then maybe, uh, maybe, maybe even make it come out to here. Yeah, here we go. Then you get up this ramp. And then uh, you get a little bit closer here. Yeah. And uh, you come up here. I don't know if there's anything by this pond, but. Uh, if there is, I'm not seeing it, but we do have a little pathway over here we could use to connect it up. And remember, we can actually... Oh! Disease! Oh! Yeah, disease contracted, but yeah, remember we could actually go through enclosures with this Jurassic Park thing, but let's forget about that now. Let's connect it up to the... to that. We have a disease contracted. I don't know if I should have it in the raptor area or not, but we have a disease critter somewhere. Oh, Gallimimus. Okay, Gallimimus is diseased. Ranger team. Oh, whoops, I did not mean to actually drive that. Uh, add task. Ranger team, medicate the Gallimimus. Adding task. And then while you're there, resupply task the uh, tall herbivore feeder. And it, let's get another one to resupply these tall herbivore feeders over here, too. That's definitely something we need to remember here in the future, you guys. There are feeders here that need to be resupplied. Another one over there. I don't think I can get another ranger team, can I? No, I can't. So that sucks. But... Should I make it actually go into the raptor? Yeah, like Alan Grant, I think, said there at the end. Don't want to have, like, a, like any danger going on right now. So let's not make it go into the raptor area. At least for right now. So let's make it return into here, I'd say. There's a pathway right here, and it just kind of ends. Hmm, I don't know what we should do about that. But editor route, yeah, let's, let's, let's get rid of... Let's, Go to delete mode. 
Let's get rid of that where it connects up like that. And then I guess, I guess, yeah, let's forget about this bit over here. Just because I, I don't know if anything even goes over here. So let's forget about that. Or, you know what, we, we can make it circle around. Yeah, we can make it circle or go around like this <laughs> just because uh, you get really up close and personal right here against all the dinos up against the oh man there is spreading though it's spreading the disease i see it spreading to like multiple creatures so probably going to want to take the uh the rangers again and make sure nothing happens there but let's make this circle around now into uh, the main uh, area again hey you know what you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna forget about it right now let's just get rid of that yeah there it is really weird how it's like completely silent right now you guys Let's just connect it up over here. So there you go. So now it just kind of squiggles around and it kind of highlights uh, where the path is. But of course, it's not always going to be like bright blue or anything like that. But at base, add task, medicate that dino, medicate that gallimimus. Man, we have uh, diseases spreading like wildfire over here, you guys. Is there any more? Oh, yeah, it's just three creatures. Okay, so that's good. But once you're done with that, you can go over here to, to the dilos and uh, take care of that. But construct and connect a part tour. Yeah, there is absolutely no, like, ambient, there is, it is completely silent right now, you guys, it's very strange. Except for, of course, stuff like that, like the storm warning and stuff, which, by the way, we never set up the, uh, the, uh, operations. Storm center things, so, I guess we'll get one over here, so, uh, let's place one, like, right here, this will be fine, sure, why not? Let's place down a path here, connect it up, ba-boom, noise, and let's go to operations, storm defense, let's try and cover this part. Now, this does not 100%, like, protect the buildings. It just, like, protects them by a percentage. So, there is still always going to be a chance. But there is a storm going on right now, so it's always good, uh, what do you call it? Courtesy, I guess you could say, to open this shelter, just in case anything breaks out. And there is a, and in case there's a heckin', like, tornado like we saw on the last island, Isla Sorna, right? So it's always good to have, a the, 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 the emergency shelters open for people to go inside and take shelter, uh, in big storms like this, so... Unfortunately, I am actually not here. I, I think I might have to restart the game or something like that, you guys, because it is a very strange playing as there's like no music, no ambient noises or anything going on right now. Oh, oh, still a diseased parasaur over there. Returning to base? No. You're going to... Oh, man, whoops. Actually, hold on. This might not be a bad thing because, yep, I can go now all the way over to here. Oh, wait, hold on. Ooh, yeah. There were... I didn't even read the rest of it there, you guys. Mission Triceratops can be seen from a tour. Mission Dilophosaurus can be seen from a tour. And Mission Parasaurolophus can be seen from a tour. Should have done that. It might be possible to see all those, though. Clearing conditions confirmed. Oh, conditions are being cleared, so that's great. But let's try and medicate this guy. Asset in range. And boom, got him. Is he good? We're going to have to hit him a second. No, I think we're good. And we still have one more diseased critter somewhere. Don't know where, though. Asset report incoming. Oh, he's right there still. The sound is like Asset really spotted. weirdly muffled right now, you guys. I don't know why. Very strange. And it was two creatures infected. That one we just hit. Yep, okay, he's good now. But where is the other one at? I don't know. Oh, it was like right in front of us. It was like right there. <laughs> All right, add task and medicate the trike. There you go. Medicate the trike, and hopefully it's going to be the last of them, right? But yeah, now we could uh, close the emergency shelters. So that would be over here. There you go. Or open them or whatever. You know, tell people, hey, it's safe to come outside, right? But there you go. No disease dinos detected. So that's great. But now we need to make sure the mission triceratops can be seen from the tour. Dilo and Paris for all of us. Is this, is this on? Oh, dino threat. What? Over here? Is that, tr is that trike trying to? Oh, it is? Uh-oh, get out of there. Oh, yep, he's in danger of the trike. Yeah, he better go back home. Oh, my God, it is completely wrecked. Look at that thing. It is completely... Look at that! <laughs> oh, man, head back to the base. Oh, we have a little bit of music going on right now, though. <laughs> but, yeah, now we have the tours going. I wonder if they're functional. Oh, yeah, look at that. Mission Dilophosaurus could be seen from the tour. That's great. Oh, the tour must be, like, going right... Oh, there they are! Ooh! Ride part to... Oh! Look at this! We're going into Dilo area right now. As it's playing a little bit of like Jurassic Park music that's hopefully not going to copy strike me. Hopefully. Look at that guy! Whoa! Look at that thing over there! <laughs> but over here's the Dilo area. As you can see with the sign that's like right in front of us. But now... 
I wonder if there's another ride. Hold on. Is there a ride ahead of us? That I already saw the dialogues. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go, here we go. They're up there, so... Yeah, they're probably going to... Oh, yeah, here are more of them right here. And they're... Oh, my God, they're going... They're really... Look at that. They're, that is extremely close. How do I... Uh, oh, switch vehicle. I could have just done this earlier. Whoops. Oh, yeah, look at this. Really close. Look at that! Like, you can't even... They're blocking the path. Like, we're stopping right now because they're in the path. This is about as up close and personal as you can get. Golly! Oh, wait. Oh, here's the other one. Or, no, this is the one we were just in, I think. Oh, yeah, here's the one that was behind that one. Yeah, look at this. This is crazy! Better put the heckin... Well, there is no roof on this one. Whoops. I was about to say, put the heckin' sunroof back up. <laughs> Brachiosaurus's name is derived from the incredible height of her humerus. She is so famous, there is an asteroid named after her. Well, look at that. Yeah, I forgot that the uh, tell you fun facts and stuff like that during the tours. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, look at that. So I assume this is the furthermost car, right? Yeah, these guys are just now getting to the Brachios. And these guys are in the front, I think. And these guys are, yeah, these guys just came out of the ride. And they're going into the Dilo area, so. Yeah, these guys are in the front. So I assume once they get close to the Parasaur and the Trike all the way over there, we're going to get this mission nice and done, you guys. But let's just, let's just keep watching and, and see what it's like to ride the tour and just get a nice view of everything. Like the lake that I, I purposely built us to, to kind of get a good view of. This vehicle is powered by an electric motor and can travel at speeds of up to 20 miles per hour. Whoa, 20 miles an hour. Whew. Better slow down. That'll kill someone. Might be able to outrun a Gallimimus at those speeds, right? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Anyways, yeah, we need to keep going forward. Because they're all the way over there, unfortunately. I placed them, like, about as far as you can get on this ride, at least. Jeez. <laughs> but this is insane right now, you guys. Like, the sunset and everything going on right now. And the view of the dinos. Oh, uh, I didn't do the binocular upgrade, did I? Yeah, that sucks. Hold on, that, that might actually help us out a bit, you guys. Because I'll help out with the, uh, the, the, the view. And they might be able to see the other critters, right? So where would that be? Would that be over here? Oh, wait. It's at the... Visitor, uh, or arrival? Yeah, visitor center. So that would be research module, research. Yep, enclosures? There it is right there. Okay, hopefully that's, oh yeah, that's going right now. Uh, hopefully that'll actually affect the, the, the ride goers that are already, oh yeah, look at that, we got that one complete. Hopefully that affects the, uh, the rides that are already out, and hopefully it won't just be the rides from now on after that finishes, right? Because yeah, look at this, these guys are like really getting really close to the dinos, so let's ride part tour. These guys in the front? No. Oh. oh god, yeah, these guys are just now getting the Brachios. Oh god, these guys are like extremely far away. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. So we're getting closer and closer now to the trikes and stuff. And hopefully the binocular upgrade, which I should have done earlier, honestly. <laughs> hopefully that gets finished and we can actually see these mission creatures. Ranger teams look after a dinosaur's health by providing specialized medical care and restocking feeders for a nutritionally balanced diet. That's right. And I see them all the way. Well, I see them, but these guys, I guess, have a, have a very... Oh, wait, I think we can actually see there. Oh, yeah, look at that. We got the, the vision thing that... I should have seen this a bit ago, but... Would that be this? Oh, yep, dinosaur visibility. Oh, yeah, that's a big... Oh, yeah, 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 look at that. Look at the big cones. Awesome, we've got... The, yep, look at that. Trike... Got a check mark now, and I think that's because we have the binoculars now. So before that upgrade, we did not have these like vision cones because these guys didn't have binoculars, but now they do. So that's great. Right, part tour. Where are the guys at the front? I have to skip all the way around. Oh wait, we were right there. Oh, here we are. Can I actually see these guys uh, binoculars or or what? I don't know. But here we go. Look at that view. Brachio, trike, parasaur, maybe Gallimimus. I can't see. Today we invite the rest of the world to experience the wonder. Of Jurassic Park. Hey kids, look, dinosaurs. And this time it's mostly safe, probably. And if you survive, you can buy a t-shirt. That's right. There's a compliment in there somewhere. We're not out of the jungle just yet. Let's see how the park gets along, John. And at the first sign of trouble. I know, I know. Remember, I've encouraged your skepticism. And seeing people eaten by prehistoric creatures pretty much solidified it. <laughs> and now you know why I keep young Cabot around. Speaking of which, have any of you esteemed doctors laid eyes on my intern recently? Hmm. You'd think this is something he wouldn't want to miss. Yes. Yes, you would. 
Uh oh, where is he? So who is going to take care of his tasks then? Where's Cabot at? I don't know. We haven't heard from him, and they're worried. And they just mentioned that. Anyways, uh, now we could open the park to the public. Now, how do we do that? We have to go like to the control room or something like that, I assume. So we haven't been here like at all. Uh, zero out of three complete. What? Uh, oh yeah, I guess mission five, six, and seven we do here. But we're about to finish number five, so that's going to be great. Now is the moment we've been building towards our chance to bring dinosaurs to the world. It's time to open the park to the guests. So, where would I do that? Oh yeah, it says like right down there. Open the park from the arrival helipads info panel. So that would be here. An open park. Let's do it. Ba boom, we got it. And now we have all these things down here from previously. Maintain 85% food rating, 85% drink rating, 85% shopping rating, and 85% restroom rating. <laughs> kind of random there with the restrooms, but what is this down here? So this would be, oh, Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler. And so I guess instead of, what was it, entertainment, science, and security or something like that beforehand. Now we have Dr. Alan Grant, Ellie Sattler, and John Hammond for uh, the, the reputation like things that we have to do. So that's actually interesting. Alright, so I guess, yeah, that explains the little symbols we saw next to their name throughout the whole series thus far. I, I was kind of wondering what that was, but now it explains that, right? <laughs> but yeah, now we can do missions for, or what was it called? It wasn't missions, because missions are the big thing. Yeah, contracts, that's what they're called. So now we can do contracts for them, so that's cool. Request a contract, and I guess that's how we're going to get back into what we were doing previously in Jurassic World Evolution, you guys. But for right now, I've been recording for a little while, and I definitely do need to stop so I can upload these for you guys. But anyways, we got a lot of really good progress done right here, you guys. When we come back with some more Jurassic World Evolution Return to Jurassic Park, looks like now we're going to be doing, like, the park maintenance part of the, uh, of the series, where we're going to, you know, attract guests to the park and try and make this place profitable. That way we can, uh, spend more money on getting bigger and better dinosaurs to bring even more people to the park and... All that kind of jazz that we did previously in my Jurassic World Evolution series, the main one. But like I said earlier, I think I'm going to end the episode right here. So thank you guys all very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to let me know by leaving a like down below. And if you guys want more of these awesome videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That'll put my latest videos on our YouTube homepage as soon as they come out so you don't miss an episode. But until then, thank you guys all very much for watching. <laughs> there's Galmimes there's Gal in the path right here. These guys can't move. But thank you guys all very much for watching. And I'll see you guys here next time with some more Jurassic World Evolution Return to Jurassic Park, where we just opened the park to the public. Let's try and make this park profitable so we can get bigger and better dinosaurs. So thank you guys all very much for watching, and I'll see you guys here next time. Oh, bye there.